Have you ever been up to Año Nuevo and looked at an elephant seal on the beach? And as you're staring at this elephant seal, think about, well, what is it doing the rest of the year when it's not on the beach? Where does it go? What is it doing there? Well, this is what we started to ask. And we realized that we can't swim as fast or dive as deep as an elephant seal, but we could ask the elephant seal to carry tags and sensors for us. And so that was the first part of our collaboration. The second part was to find computer engineers and, and engineers, electronics engineers, to develop small tags that won't bother the animal, that the animal can carry and can go to 1,000 meters and can stay at sea for a year that can collect information on where that animal was going and what it was doing. So we did that, and we found some things that were completely unexpected. Here is what we used to think. This is from a textbook. This is when we had planes and boats, and we looked for elephant seals where we could look for them. But when we asked the elephant seal to carry these little tracking devices, we found out that, in fact, when they told us where they were going, they were using most of the North Pacific Ocean. Completely unexpected. This is something we hadn't really thought about. There's a lot we've learned by doing this, but I'll give you one of my favorite stories, and that is uh, in 2006, my students who are collaborators were looking for six-year-old females, and they read one of our tags that gives us the age of the females wrong, and they, in fact, found a 17-year-old female. They put a tracking device on it, got back to the lab, and realized, oh, that was a 17-year-old female. We wouldn't normally tag female that old. But what was amazing is by complete accident, they had picked a female that 11 years earlier we tagged as a six-year-old. And so we had a track of a female in 1995 as a six-year-old, and then 11 years later, the same female as a 17-year-old. Amazing fidelity in that that female must have been year after year doing pretty much the same thing. Now, we've taken this technology to the far corners of the planet. And here I show you some figures of uh, the Antarctic Peninsula. So it's the south, just south, Amer uh, south of South America. This is land. This is open ocean. This is the continental shelf. And these are tracks of different southern elephant seals, a close relative of the northern elephant seal we have up here. And you can see by just putting this in the context of the ocean, you can start to get an idea of how the animals are doing different things. But remember, just seeing what they do on the surface is part of the story. And as this technology develops, we're able to add pressure transducers to the tags that will allow us to figure out what the animal is doing. You can see here that it's diving to the bottom. And then out here in the open ocean, you can see a pattern where at nighttime it's shallower and daytime it's deeper. Mm -hmm. So we're beginning a, a view of the lifetime of this animal that we'd never seen before and actually never even considered it could be doing the things that it's doing. Well, as this technology develops and our collaboration with electric, electrical engineers and computer scientists and sensor developers continues, we can add other sensors to these tags. This is a, a, a picture that shows data that's collected from the tag on water temperature. We can add measures much of the saltiness of the ocean, the oxygen content of the ocean, and other parameters that we can collect as the animal moves through the water. One of the things here is you can see that the water is colder here, and it's deeper. Uh, where it's deeper, it actually gets warmer. Now, this is important because if we're trying to figure out how the habitat of the animal is changing due to climate change, we need to understand how these various features of the, of the ocean determine where the animal goes. And once we do that, we can talk to climatologists and physical oceanographers and make predictions about what will happen to the habitat in the future. Now, this is an example of that. Here we have, this is open ocean, this is ice, so this gray that's growing and exceeding is ice, and these red dots are southern elephant seals, and you'll see these green dots are crab eater seals. And what I want you to see here is that the green dots never leave the ice, but the red dots, which is these individual elephant seals, are moving all over this region, going into the ice, going up to these islands, that's the Falklands, South Georgia, and that elephant seals don't seem to care if the ice is there or not. They can go into it, but they don't rely on it. The crab eater seals, on the other hand, really rely on the ice, and the ice is an integral component of their habitat. So as climate changes, and one of the things we know is that ice is, re is receding at a very rapid rate, 
in this region of the world, the habitat for elephant seals is also decreasing. So while elephant seals may, able to, may be able to handle this changing environment, animals like crab-eater seals will not be able to handle it, and their populations will decline. So that's how we can understand what the animals are doing. And another interesting aspect of this collaboration took another unpredicted turn. As we were tracking these elephant seals, and these are again tracks of elephant seals back in 2008, this region here, which is an ice shelf, ice that's floating out over the ocean, broke off. So this is a NASA photograph showing the big chunk of the ice falling off into the ocean. And this was totally unexpected. I knew that we had tracks with animals that were collecting water temperature in this region. I knew that these data had to be useful to somebody, but I didn't know who. So I contacted many of my colleagues and I said, is there anybody that you know of that would like to use these data? And I got in, finally got in touch with a guy named Laurie Padman at the Research Institute up in Oregon. And he said, I'll take those data. And so we gave him the data. And the first thing he found is that the animals were diving deeper than the bottom. Well, this didn't surprise us because the way that we studied bathymetry was, was very difficult. There's very little data on the bathymetry of this part of the world. So we used the diving pattern of elephant seals to better map the ocean floor. And then what we found is that in the regions of this ice shelf, there were canyons where the, where the continental shelf was deeper, and these deeper canyons allowed warm, this warm, deep water to come up onto the continental shelf and go underneath this ice shelf, adding heat to the ice shelf, ice shelf causing it to melt more rapidly. So all of a sudden, we had elephant seals helping us understand the climate and how ice dynamics are changing. Now, why should we care about a little ice shelf like this? Well, there's another ice shelf down here called the Pine Island Glacier. And this ice shelf, if it complete, it's one of the most active places in the world, if and or maybe when it collapses, it will change the sea level of the planet by three feet. So things in the Southern Ocean do have an effect on us. Now, these collaborations continue to expand, and this figure just shows how we have worked together with colleagues from uh, the UK, from France, from Australia, my team in the US, we've added Brazilians, uh, South Africans, Norwegians, and we're collectively looking at elephant seals to understand what they do, but also to help collect data on the ocean and these environments, because our traditional technologies don't work in this part of the world because of the presence of ice. We're doing this because we're interested in the animals, but we're doing this because we're worried about the planet. Much of the weather of the, of the Southern Ocean, much of the weather of the planet, is driven by what happens in the Southern Ocean. So I started out with a collaboration wondering where elephant seals go, worked with engineers, and my world both got bigger and smaller. It got bigger in terms of the people I collaborated with, it got smaller in terms of our ability to communicate across many, very, many, many disciplines. We also learned that we have to share our data because our data are valuable to people in ways that we hadn't considered. So we've now got a collaborator of an animal, of, phys of physical oceanographers, of climatologists and modelers, and I would have never thought that studying an elephant seals would have taken me there. I guess it was my kismet. Thank you.